Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. And thank you in advance for liking and subscribing to my channel. Your support allows me to continue to do these reviews, so thanks. I've talked about my nib guru extraordinaire Jack Hernandez many times on my channel. He's a brilliant nibmeister and has ground many nibs for me over the last year. In fact, the pen that makes my inquiring mind scribble is a Leonardo Memento Zero Blue Hawaii with a nib that was cut by Jack into an architect. I recently purchased a Tibaldi Bononia Bora Bora from Applebaum. I purposely bought that pen with a double broad nib because I intended to have Jack make another architect for me. The more tipping material he has to work with, the better. I visited Jack and while we were chatting, he showed me some of his amazing collection of pens. Vintage Montblancs, Viscontis, a totally unique Waterman, and a Schaefer Legacy II. I was particularly struck by the Schaefer, as I'd been jonesing for a Schaefer PFM Imperial or Legacy for some time. Jack says, take it, do a review. So I took it. And now I'm afraid he might not get it back. But before he holds my Tibaldi hostage, I wanted to do a full review of this amazing US-made Schaefer from the late 1990s and provide some history on these stunning Schaefer inlaid nibs right now. And what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this pen. Before we get to the pen itself, actually, I'd like to talk about the history of the Schaefer inlaid nib. I have one in this mid-70s Schaefer Targa that was gifted to me by my good friend Ron and once belonged to his wonderful dad, Dennis. This is what a fountain pen should look like in my imagination, my memory, and in my dreams. This is why I love my Waterman Corinne so much, because it looks similar to the classic Schaefer inlaid nib. Let's look at its origins and its evolution. The spectacular inlaid gold Schaefer nib was introduced in 1959 in a pen called the PFM, or Pen for Men. Now, before you get all stupid and cancel culture -y, on Schaefer, in 1959 there was a distinct market for pens for both women and men. The Lady Schaefer comes to mind, which had its own beautiful inlaid gold nib. I think there was a Lady Parker too. A Lady Parker duofold, in fact. And what about Waterman and the Lady Patricia, which was a smaller version of the Patrician? Today we don't make those distinctions and men and women are free to write with the pens of any size or finish they like. And even though I've been accused of having a girly pen, I don't care. I love this pen. So we shall call the PFM a pretty fine, amazing pen. Okay? Okay. Whoever has the marriage one, just pass it up to the front row. Okay? The PFM, in addition to the glorious inlaid 14 karat gold nib, incorporated Schaefer's snorkel filling system that was introduced in 1952. The snorkel filler is a touchdown filling system with a metal tube that extends out the front of the feed and which you dip into the ink. The touchdown system is an internal ink sack that is pneumatically compressed by pressing down on a rod that extends out the back of the barrel. When Schaefer discontinued the PFM in 1963, they discontinued the snorkel as well. It had lots of moving parts and was expensive to maintain and repair. Schaefer introduced the Schaefer Imperial, another beautiful inlaid gold nib pen, in 1961. This pen had the touchdown filling system and was manufactured until 1998. In 1976, Schaefer introduced the Targa. This is a much thinner cartridge and cartridge converter pen that was extremely popular and Schaefer made thousands of them in a huge variety of styles and finishes until 1998. In 1995, Schaefer introduced the Legacy. There were a number of versions and Schaefer is still making the Legacy Heritage. The Legacy 1 and 2 were heavily influenced by the design of the PFM but it is a convertible filler in that it has both the touchdown pneumatic filler of old, 
but can be used with a standard Schaefer cartridge as well. Of course, the modern Schaefers are not made in the U.S. any longer. In 2000, Schaefer introduced the Intrigue, which also has the classic inlaid gold nib, and they discontinued that model in 2005. The only Schaefer inlaid gold nib I can find that is a current model is the Schaefer Legacy Heritage, which is a cartridge converter pen. So this Schaefer Legacy 2 is an excellent example of a US made Schaefer with an inlaid gold nib when the company was still making great pens. Schaefer made the Legacy in three categories, the traditions, the perspectives, and the trendsetters. This Legacy here is part of the trendsetters category and is specifically the model 866 linear black legacy with an 18 karat gold palladium plated nib. It came in a red box with an added acrylic pen stand. Overall, the pen is fairly short, thick, and has a good amount of heft to it at 38 grams. From the top, we see the round finial of the chrome cap, which is a design change from the original PFM, which had squared off top and bottom finials. And we see the Schaefer white dot, which used to mean a lifetime warranty and now just means, yeah, it's a Schaefer white dot. The clip is relatively short, uh, but very practical uh, with a spring loaded hinge. The cap tapers up quickly and is straight to the end where there's a single groove circling the cap, which gives the impression of a cap band. In fact, other versions have different finishes here. Uh, like gold on silver or silver on gold that delineate the cap band more than this one. Then we see Schaefer USA on the bottom of the cap. There is a small step down to the grooved black enamel painted brass barrel, which is straight until the very end where it starts to taper towards the chrome blind cap, which ends in a domed circle. The cap snaps off to reveal the spectacular 18 karat gold inlaid nib and tapering black plastic section. The section begins with a chrome ring, then a piece of black plastic, and then another thin chrome ring. These rings are the clutch mechanism for securing the cap. The cap slips on nicely, and then there is a positive click. It is reminiscent of the capping and uncapping feel of the Lamy 2000. Let's take a closer look at this nib. It has a Schaefer, a hallmark, a circle R for trademark, 18K and 750 indicating the gold content. Look at the profile of this nib for a moment. If you are new to this type of Schaefer nib, you might think that the nib is bent, but this upsweep is part of the design. It has a waverly nib feel to it as the nib points slightly upward and you are touching the paper with the underside of that tip. I love it. The tail end of the inlay just goes to a point without the tab that can be found on the PFM nib. And there is the plastic feed. There is no indication of size on this section, uh, but this one is a medium. The section unscrews to reveal the touchdown filler. This gold colored cylinder houses the ink sack. And there's the hole at the back that allows the pressure of that rod going in to compress that sack. The original touchdown filler was a fixed unit and therefore very airtight. A single stroke of the rod and the sack would fill almost completely. The more modern convertible version isn't as airtight, so Schaefer recommends two strokes of the rod to get a complete fill. Jack had ink in the pen when I borrowed it, but I quickly wrote it dry. So I filmed the filling of the pen with the touchdown system for you to see. Here's that video now. One of the things to be aware of with vintage pens that use ink sacks is that certain inks can cause the ink sacks to deteriorate or even turn into a goo. To be mindful of that, and also because this gorgeous pen doesn't belong to me, I'm filling it with Waterman Mysterious Blue. Waterman inks like Serenity Blue and Mysterious Blue are some of the safest inks to use on vintage pens, or so I'm told by the experts and know-it-alls at the Fountain Pen Network. And now, here's that man with all the wisdom of bygone ages, Mr. Know-it-all. Thank you.
you and hello used wisdom lovers everywhere. So, here goes. So we unscrew the line cap and pull the rod out and then we dip the pen into the ink up to the filler hole and we push down and then it snaps and then we pull it up one more time dip into the ink and down and there are a few more bubbles there Two times is the charm, says Schaefer. And we just wipe off the nib. And we should be ready to write. The inside of the cap shows the plastic cap seal. The cap posts deeply and securely and makes the pen just exquisite in the hand. Before I even placed this nib to paper, I was intrigued by the feel in my hand. The balance is just perfect, either posted or unposted, but this pen begs to be posted, both ergonomically and aesthetically. I love my Schaefer Targa, but the girth is just a bit too slim for my hand for extended writing. The thickness of this legacy, and the fact that you can hold it anywhere up and down the section, makes me want to write and write and just write with it. Oh, and that nib. Well, just wait for it. Wait for it! <laughs> now let's look at some size comparisons. Here is the Schaefer Legacy 2 with a Schaefer Targa, a Waterman Karen, a Pilot E95S, and a Pilot Metropolitan. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. They all post beautifully, and they all write beautifully with the exception of the Metro. I can't bear that huge, uncomfortable step down from the barrel and that narrow section. Sorry, Metro lovers, just not for me. Now let's look at some measurements, and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Schaefer Legacy 2. And it has a medium 18 karat gold nib. Let's check the wetness. <laughs> this nib is very, very wet indeed. The nib is incredible. It is just so smooth. It's just a hint of feedback, just a hint. It has great bounce. And you can get some line variation out of it. But again, it's not a flex nib. But uh, you can see that nib bounce when you write. And the ink today is Waterman. Mysterious. Here are some close matches to this ink from inkswatch.com. This line is 0.6 millimeters in thickness, which makes it a western medium or a Japanese. medium to broad. And for our quote,
and for some reverse writing. Yeah, it's very scratchy. And the pen unbalances when you turn it around, so I don't think I want to do that. And some quick writing. No issues whatsoever. So what do I like and what do I not like so much about this fountain pen? I've wanted to hold one of these, or a PFM, in my hands for more than a year. I thought it would be perfect in my hand and with this beautiful inlaid nib. It was a definite grail pen for me. The moment I held it, it confirmed my feelings about it, and when I put the nib to paper, oh my. The heavens opened and the choirs began to sing. It's like those miserable songs that are so depressing. Now knock it off! Yes, Lord! I think Jack had to pinch me. I had to ask the guy next to me to pinch me to make sure I wasn't dreaming. And speaking of pinch, I might just have to pinch this pen back from Jack. I do love this pen. I love everything about it. The weight, the balance, the feel to the sublime nib on paper experience, to the lines and aesthetics of the pen, and of course, that inlaid nib. I also love the history that this pen brings with it. People will get instantly bored as I drone on and on about the evolution of this pen. Hey, I hope this hasn't been boring for you. It's just that whenever I start to talk about Lane, I always get so carried away. I lose all track of time. From the pen for men to the legacy heritage. But I don't care, because I'm in pen heaven. Heaven, I'm in heaven. As a total pen nerd, techno geek, I love the pneumatic filling system. It's just so freaking cool. And what do I not like about the pen? Well, two things, really. One, it doesn't belong to me. And two... When I do get mine, I think it'll have a black body and a gold cap and nib, that's all. And there you have it. Thanks go out to Jack Hernandez for the loan of this extraordinary pen. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And don't forget that you can join as a member of my channel for only 79 cents a month and I guarantee I will answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis and stickers too. Good, good, okay. Does anyone have anything to add to what that girl just said? And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching and that's all she wrote. this.